Hallelujah. Hosanna almighty Yahweh. Cheneke. Amen. So nini na nini. On this Sabbath, Sabbath, all glory and honor to the Most High Yah. Let's go um, before the um, Most High in a word of prayer. Oh, Father, um, we come before you thanking you uh, for your loving kindness. Great is thy faithfulness. You are mighty and great and awesome. We give you all the kimball, all the glory and honor for this Shabbat, Sabbat, Samba, this day of rest that you have sanctified, that we should honor, hallelujah, from generations to generations, hallelujah, from sunset until sunset, hallelujah. We thank you for this rest. Pray that your holy angels, your anointing, your Holy Spirit will come and be in this session and let your power and your virtue flow, hallelujah, to send a, a fresh anointing, hallelujah, to bless us. And we give you all the kimbo again and glory and honor be unto you, most righteous Yah. Hallelujah. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord For the Lord Ayah is omnipotent, lest, yes, the Lord Ayah is omnipotent. The Lord I am, He is wonderful. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord I am. For the Lord I am is omnipotent. Yes, the Lord our Yah is almighty. The Lord our Yah, He is wonderful. Hallelujah, the Lord our Yah, He is wonderful. Oh, the Lord our Yah, He wonderful he's wonderful he's wonderful he's wonderful he's wonderful he's wonderful he is so wonderful hallelujah well i forgot some of the words hallelujah and kind of the way it flowed by their trial so all praises, hallelujah, the praises must go up to the Most High Yah. Let the redeem of Yah say so, hallelujah. So if we've been redeemed, we must say so, hallelujah. And so um, let's sing another song. This song I learned um, when I was attending this church in Brooklyn, New York. And the name of the church... Um, Mm -hmm. I forgot to, but it was in Brooklyn. Oh. And I know the pastor's name, but I'm not calling any names right now. I remember the pastor's name, but I forgot the name of the church. Okay, I think I remember it. But it was um, Holiness Church. One of the things I remember that is so now poignant, I've been using that word lately, is that the pastor used to preach. Um, he used to preach. Take, I took that pork off my fork and I took the swine off my mind. And at the time, was I eating pork then? I think I had stopped. But, you know, I just thought it was like, you know, just another thing the pastor was saying. But no, there was something very powerful about a church preaching against pork. A Sunday worship in church, oh, you know, it's like kind of unheard of. But um, it's like, you know, we have bits and pieces of what we call the truth as we say we're waking in. We're waking up today to our true heritage and who we really are and what really the Most High is commanded, what we are really truly commanded to do. You know, so it seems like um, there are bits and pieces of information and 
And we're trying to find our way back to the most high and do what he says, because we want the blessings and not the curses. Amen. And that being said, yeah, so I just thought that was when I think of it now that he was preaching it. I took the pork off my fork and the swine off my mind. It is a very powerful thing to be coming from a church. Hallelujah. As we know, we've been brainwashed. We've been bamboozled and hoodwinked, you know, um, as um, Malcolm X used to say. We've been bamboozled and hoodwinked about who we truly are, you know, so the lie is unfolding and the truth is coming out, as I said, to our true heritage. So we are waking up. Hallelujah. May the Most High continue to reveal himself to us. And when we, may we, you know, the bits and pieces of the truth that we have may to come together and form a whole and so that he will unite us. And one of the things I love, I read this um, psalm today. Let's see if I can remember it. Um, talking about how the Most High is waking up his people. And let's see if I can remember the psalm. And then we'll get back to that psalm that that pastor used to sing. The one that said, I took the pork of my pork and the swine of my mind. Um, I will find it. So let's sing the song until I get it. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Because you're worthy of it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to you. Thank you, Yahweh. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I got to make it personal. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. Glory to you. Thank you, Yahweh. I give you the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory. To you, thank you, Yahweh. I give you the praise, hallelujah! I give you the praise. Why? Because Psalms 53 and 6. Oh, that salvation for Israel or Yisrael would come out of Zion when Yah restores his people, hallelujah! Let Jacob or Jacob rejoice. And Israel, or you so the lay be glad when he restores us. Hallelujah. We shall be glad, oh. Amen, oh. So we praise him on this Shabbat, Sabbath, Sabbata, for his loving kindness. Great is his faithfulness to us. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I just wanted to come and just sing some songs of praise because, um, yeah. Those of us who've been redeemed, we must say so. If we can't keep it to ourselves. We can't hold it. It must come out, right? Because it's inside of us. So those praises must exude. They must come out into the atmosphere. You know, the nature praises the most high. In the morning when I wake up and all praises, I hear the birds singing. And it's so beautiful. And I say, they're singing to the most high. Yeah. When you see the breeze and the, uh, the, um, the, the leaves are swaying. He said that's a praise to the Messiah that the leaves and the trees are praising him. Hallelujah. And so when you hear the chicken crowing, uh, the rooster crowing, and we say that's a praise. Hallelujah. So nature praises the Messiah. And so therefore we, at the top of the food chain, as they say, we must praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. All. So let's sing another song. Mm. And what would that be? I like to sing old school songs because uh, they take you back, hallelujah, to the time when you first met the Most High, when you first began to know him and to come into a right relationship with him. So, yeah, the old songs did kind of do that. Our praises. And this song says, you are your way. That is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. 
You'll never share your honor with anybody. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. We used to sing this in Nigeria. I'm sure they still sing it. You are Yahweh, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You'll never share your honor with anybody. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Let's take it up. You are Yahweh, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You'll never share your honor with anybody. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Let's take it up again. You are Yahweh, that is your name. You'll never share your glory with anyone. You'll never share your honor with anybody. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Let's take it up again. You are Yahweh, that is your name. You'll never share your glory with anyone. You'll never share your honor with anybody. You'll never share your honor with anybody. You'll never share your honor with anybody. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Almighty Yahweh, that is your name. Hallelujah. He'll never share his glory with anybody anyone not an idol of any sort of any kind whether it be on the earth from the water or wherever it's coming from he's not going to share his glory with anyone hallelujah that's why we say all praise to the most high yah hallelujah hey he's so awesome and so incredibly wonderful he doesn't share his glory with anyone hallelujah he blesses us with gifts and talents he allows us to shine forth the light that he's given us but he won't ever share his glory, his Kimbo. Hallelujah. As I say, Kimbo, Natata Zambi, Yamazulu. Natata Zambi, Yamazulu. Kimbo, Natata Zambi, Yamazulu. Natata Zambi, Yamazulu. Hallelujah, Kimbo, Natata Zambi, Yama Zulu, Natata Zambi, Yama Zulu. Hallelujah, Kimbo, 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 to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah, all praise to the Most High Yah. They say Zambi in, in uh, Central Africa, I believe in Yaoundé, they also say, they call the Most High Zambi. Mm-hmm. So we call the Most High different names, all praises, based on our cultural experiences, based on how the Most High has revealed himself to us, right? So all praises. Oopsie, sorry about that. And now let's read, because um, keeping the Sabbath is a uh, part of the required mints for his people. It is uh, the covenant that the Most High has established for his people, for he has revealed himself to us. Uh -huh, this divine covenant, he reveals himself to his people. I believe that's in... Psalms 25 and 14. Let's read that. And then we're going to read um, a few scriptures. Hallelujah. So there's um, praise and then there's the word. Hallelujah. And the, 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 uh, the, the word, I call that like the main course. And then I would call the singing, the worship. It's like the dessert. Hallelujah. <laughs> the icing on the cake, as they say. And let's read Psalms 25 and 14. Yah confides in those who fear him. Mm -hmm. He makes his covenant known to them. So when we fear the Most High, we um, revere him. So the fearing is like a, rever a reverence that we give honor and, and glory unto him, showing him respect, right? Uh -huh. And so therefore, to those who have that kind of mindset, he reveals himself to them. And so in revealing himself to us, he has shown us this divine covenant that we should keep the law, right? And the testimony of Isaiah. So let's read in um, Ezra uh, 7. After these things, during the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, son of Zariah, the son of Azariah, son of Hilkiah, 
son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Amarioth, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzi, the son of Buki, the son of Abushua. Abushua, that sounds uh, like something in a Niger. <laughs> the son of Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. Uh -huh. The priests come from where? The lineage of the Levites. The Levitical priesthood uh -huh. from the lineage of Aaron. This Ezra, uh -huh, who's from that lineage, is a priest, right? So anybody else who's calling themselves um, to be a priest, um, you have to go back to the scriptures. Are you from the lineage of the Levites? Because the priests come from the Levites, right? So this Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher well versed in the law of Moses. Amen. For those who are keeping the law, who are the teachers of the law, who are, who are um, um, well trained in this particular area because this is most needed because we need to have direction and instruction for how we should be living. And if we have uh, the teachers of the law, then we are able to get that uh, instruction and direction so we can know how we should govern our lives. This is very key, very important for us as his chosen people. So um, he's a very, he's a, a teacher well versed in the law of Moses, which Yah Yah of Yisrael or Israel had given him had given. The king granted him everything he asked. Mm, now this is favor. Come on, somebody. The king granted him everything he asked, for the hand of Yah, or his Yah, was on him. Hallelujah. Mm -mm, we're talking about favor. So. Um, and it's a blessing when we say these pagan kings or these people who don't serve the Most High will give favor to the people of Yah. We bless Yah for that. Hallelujah. And we believe that that's going to happen in these times as well. That there are going to be leaders who are going to favor the people of Yah. Hallelujah. And they're going to give us what we ask. Ha! They're going to give us what we need. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, 7. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants, also came up to Jerusalem or Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. So um, after they have been exiled, they are uh, being allowed to come back to the land. Hallelujah. All praises to Most High Yah and to build, right? And Nehemiah was part of building up the uh, the walls and Ezra was a part of bringing back, um, um, bringing back um, spirituality, bringing back uh, the temple worship. Hallelujah. Putting uh, the people back on the right path and where they should be in terms of their uh, worship in terms of their service to the Most High in terms of their their spiritual life, where they should be. Ezra was a part of uh, re uh, rebuilding the people again and bringing them back in right standing with the Most High So all priests must be uh, Levites, but not all Levites are priests. So some of them serve as musicians, right? They serve as uh, servants in um, in temple worship. Right. And I love the musicians are there. Some of them are musicians. Hallelujah. For the Levites. Hallelujah. Who are bringing the instruments to give all praise and glory and honor. So we praise the most high for the musicians who are using their talents to give glory and honor to the most high. Yeah. I'll say it again. We praise the most high. Yeah. For the musicians who are using their talents to give praise and glory unto the most high. Yeah. It's a great blessing in that. And verse eight. So, um, Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He began his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month. And he arrived in Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. Wow, what a long journey, right? Took some months. For the gracious hand of Yah, of his Yah, it's a personal thing, you know. He's, he's my Yah. He's my Papa. He's my Savior. He's mine. Hallelujah. Was on him. So the favor of Yah was on him. When Yah's favor is on you, Things are going to begin to come in place. They're going to begin to move and shift in your direction for good things that the Most High wants to manifest, that He wants to bring forth from your life, that He wants to produce. Mm -hmm. So that seed is planted, it's watered, right? It's given all the nutrients it needs, and then it must come forth. It must birth itself, right? So the Most High has given all of us something to do in a particular season at a particular time. And that thing will come forth. It will bring uh, forth that uh, which the Most High wants um, in a particular time. Hallelujah. When it has reached its full maturity, hallelujah, it will manifest. Like the baby in the womb for nine months, hallelujah, 
supposed to go nine months. Sometimes the baby comes sooner. Hallelujah. But when it is reached its full term, you know, the, um, they say, as you would say, the, um, it's better for the baby to uh, reach that full nine months term. So everything is fully and completely formed and the baby can come out in the ninth month. So it is the most high has given us something. He's birthed something inside of us. He's planted something inside of us that must bring forth life that must come to fruition that must be birthed. Hallelujah. So the favor of Yah was on Ezra. And so the king is giving him what he needs. Hallelujah. To bring um, spiritual um, um, reconciliation, if you will, spiritual reformation, if you will, to the uh, scattered sheep who are now being allowed, who are coming out of Babylonian captivity and they're being allowed to come back to the land. And Ezra is a part of helping to build them up spiritually. So we praise the most high for the leaders today who are building up the people of Yah spiritually. Hallelujah. That is a great task. For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of Yah. The law of who? The law of Yah. We say the law of Moses. The law was given through Moses, but it's the laws of the most high Yah. So you can't debate it. <laughs> You're debating with the most high when you start to say, we ain't doing the law no more. We ain't doing that. That's out. We, uh, we don't have to do that anymore. Nonsense. It says right here, Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of Yah and to teaching its decrees and laws in Yusobele. And these laws are for his people. Again, this is how we govern ourselves. Hallelujah. To do what the Most High says that we should do. Now let's also read. Um, so he loved the law. He loved to keep the law of Yah. And because it brings blessings, he had the favor of the king so that he could help to reform Yah's people. Right? He was studying. He was dedicating himself to the scriptures, to doing what he was called to do. Working in that assignment that the Most High gave him to do. Hallelujah. We must work that assignment given to each and every one of us. We all have an assignment. Those of us, his children, there's something we are called to do. And we must do that assignment. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to get an F, right? You know, when you don't do your assignment in class, right? You get an F. You fail. We don't want to get a D because that's just barely passing. We don't necessarily want to get a C either because that's satisfactory. We want to be up in the B and the A area. B is good. It could be very good. And A is like excellent. Hallelujah. So that's what we're striving to be to the most high. Yah, excellent. Hallelujah. All praises. Excellent, Yahweh. Um, marvelous Yahweh. There is no one greater than Yahweh, Lord divine. We used to sing this in Nigeria too. Who is greater than Yahweh, Lord divine? There is no one greater than Yahweh, Lord divine. Who is greater than Yahweh, Lord divine? There is no one greater than Yahweh, Lord divine. Excellent Yahweh, marvelous Yahweh. There is no one greater than Yahweh, Lord divine. There is no one greater than Yahweh, Lord divine. So we want to be all up in the excellent because the Most High is excellent. And we all want to reflect him. Hallelujah. Right? We want to show forth his goodness. Amen. Oh. So yes, he dedicated himself to the teaching of the law so that he can teach the people. Those who are leaders must dedicate themselves so that they can be able to give that which is inside of them. Hallelujah. So yeah, so now let's read uh, Psalm 25. Psalm 25 and verse 10. All the ways of Yah are loving and faithful toward those who keep what? The demands of his covenant. Yes, we must keep this covenant. Hallelujah. It's been given to our ancestors. It's been handed down to us. And therefore, we are the recipients of it. We are the possessors of this great covenant. And we must do this covenant. Hallelujah. So that again, we can have the blessings and not the curses. Right? We are not the Gentiles. We are the people of the book. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah! All praises to the Most High Yah. Verse 13, they will spend their days in prosperity and the descendants will inherit the land. So the keepers of the law, those who are following his commandments, those are going to be the possessors. Those are going to be the ones who possess the land. Hallelujah. They will spend their days in prosperity. Hallelujah. So poverty is not our portion. Oh, it is not our own. Our, our ancestor, Dawidi, King David, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed bread and bread. I believe he said that in Psalms 37. And 25, 
Let's check the records. Psalms 37 and 25. And yes, he said I was young and now I'm old. <laughs> Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken. <laughs> Or their children begging bread. We don't beg, oh, we're not begging, oh, we are the children of the Most High, Yah. Therefore, we have the blessings, we have the inheritance, hallelujah, of King Dawidi, of our ancestor Abraham. We are his children, hallelujah, and Abraham's children are coming home. And those who are faithful to the Most High, Yah, keeping his commandments, those are the ones who are going to be prosperous and who will inherit the land. So, also, I made a note of. Um, Psalms 25 and verse 14. Yah confides, or I read that one already, I'll read it again. Yah confides in those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. So we fear the most high, Yah, because he's not to be played with, okay? Excuse me. <laughs> my eyes are ever on Yah, for, for only he will release my feet from the stand. Hey! We must be faithful to the most high, Yah, for whatever captivity we find ourselves in, whether it be for our own disobedience or whatever. It's only the Most High Yah who's going to release us. Hallelujah. And verse 22. Um, Deliver Yisolele, or Israel, O Yah, from all their troubles. We are asking the Most High Yah, as we are, if we are faithful, Papa, mm, will you, mm, miracle Papa, will you release this, us from this snare? Release us from this captivity? The land of Africa and wherever we're scattered, will you release us from this captivity? And will you release us from our troubles? And he, he promised that he would. If we are obedient, he will do it all. Now let's make, I want to um, also read Psalms uh, 119, uh, which I believe they're saying that they believe that Ezra is also the author of Psalms 119. And Psalms 119 is, is about how much the author loves the law of Yah. Hallelujah. And so let's read Psalms 119, 41 through 48. May your unfailing love come to me, Papa, the love of Yah. His, his love is unfailing. We as human beings, we fail each other at times. And, you know, we're going to disappoint each other because we're human beings. And may the Most High have mercy on us. May we forgive our brother, our sister, who's wronged us. And may they forgive us if we wrong them. And may the unfailing love of Yah continue to flow. His love is, it doesn't fail. As I said, we humans, we disappoint each other, but the Most High's love is enduring. It's everlasting. It's without fail. Hallelujah. You can always count on his love. In verse 42, then I can answer anyone who taunts me for I trust in your word. So if we have the love of the Most High, yeah, who's ever trying to come at us any kind of way to disturb us in any kind of way with any kind of nonsense, we can just cancel it. We can just dismiss it. Because we have the, the love of the Most High, yeah, we have the greatest standing by our side, hallelujah, who's with us. So we can just deal with any anybody, hallelujah, <laughs> mm. any circumstance. Verse 43, never take your word of truth from my mouth. Oh, Papa, please don't take your word of truth from my mouth. For I have put my hope in your laws, hallelujah. We hope in the laws of Yah because they bring us strength, peace, prosperity, they give us stability and direction for our lives. It is the covenant that the Most High has given us. Hallelujah. It's how we commune with him. Hallelujah. It is the sign that we are his children. Hallelujah. Because we do what he say. Ha! What, what he says. Hallelujah. I will always obey your law. Hallelujah. Forever and ever. It's an eternal covenant. Hallelujah. It is an eternal covenant. Hallelujah. And so it said that Abraham would teach his descendants. Hallelujah. The Most High gave the covenant to Abraham. Because he knew that Abraham's lineage would continue in that great covenant as we are trying to continue in the great covenant. Hallelujah. Forever and ever it is eternal. Verse 45, I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. So the laws of Yah bring us freedom, not bondage, right? We are free. So we don't look at the Sabbath on the keeping of the commandments as bondage. Let's go to Isaiah 58. We don't see it as bondage. Oh man, I got to can't cook. Some people don't cook on the Shabbat. I don't uh, because we don't light a fire, right? That's in the book of Exodus. I believe Exodus 36. We'll go there in a moment, but let's we'll stay focused. We're on Isaiah 58. So yeah, because in Africa you cook with fire, so you're not going to cook on the Shabbat because he's a consuming fire and he's the one to share that space on the Shabbat. He's a fire, so we don't cook. 
In Africa, we don't cook on Shabbat. That's our concept. And again, we'll go to Exodus in a minute. And so, um, so some people find it a burden. Oh, it's a Sabbath. I can't work. Well, you should want to rest, right? Medically, this body needs to have a 24 period rest, right? So, you know, medical science is just saying what the Most High has already said, what he has already established. We should rest on the Shabbat. Uh -huh. And so it's not a burden. So there's many things we can eat that are not cooked. Or it's already been cooked, so you don't need to heat it. You can have like an egg salad for those who believe that you shouldn't cook. Um, pasta salad, right? Tuna. Um, what else? My ideas. Sardines uh -huh, with crackers and onions and cucumber and avocado or pear. They call it pear in Africa. And you could make it into a... Um, avocado um what do they call that oh my goodness when you when you mash up avocado guacamole right some people put salt i used to put salt in my avocado but oh my guacamole i don't do that anymore it just i like the, just the natural taste and then there's so many things you can have and you can have like some um the little dipper um kind of like um nacho thingies and you can dip um like some kind of um uh like um salad that you make it could be eggs and something or some other kind of um concoction so there are many things you can do or you can have some leftover plantain right some leftover baked chicken right it, it may not need to be refrigerated and many leftover things some leftover baked fish or some people might fry it you know mm -hmm. not too much fried foods it's not good for us huh? And then um, there's so many things, like I said, and there's so many different types of fruits you can have on the Shabbat. And you can have bread, right? Amen. And yeah, so many different things you can have. And even you can have um, a burrito, right? With some um, lettuce or spinach. And again, onions, avocado, and some peppers. And so many things you can have um, to make your Sabbath. It's supposed to be a feast. It's not supposed to be a burden. Oh, man, I can't do this. It's not about what you can't do. It's about what you are enjoying that time of rest and worshiping and honoring the Most High. Mm. Verse 13 of Isaiah 58. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day. So it's not that you're just going to run up and down doing grocery shopping and going to the store, going to the market, going to the mall. No, we're trying to rest and enjoy. That focuses to the most high for the, his holy day. We keep it holy. And from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Shabbat a delight and Yah's holy day honorable, it is, is the honor that we give unto him. Mm -hmm. It's a sign that we are his people, right? Ezekiel 20 and 12 and 20 and 20. And if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or breaking or speaking out of words, not talking all this nonsense, we shouldn't be talking nonsense on any day, but especially on the Shabbat, we want to make sure we are honoring him. Then you will find joy in Yah. So you, we don't see it as a burden. Some other um, versions of text will say that, you know, you don't see it as a burden. This is the NIV. Then you will find joy in Yah. We, there's joy in keeping his commandments and doing what he says. And I will cause you to ride. Hey, I will cause you to try out. Oh. Ride in triumph on the heights of the land. Hallelujah. We're going places. We, there are places and levels that we can reach when we obey the Most High and do what he says. You're looking for the spirituality and where is it? It's in the scriptures. It's in keeping his commandments. That's the height of, hallelujah, of our spirituality is obeying him and keeping his, and walking in this divine covenant. Then you will begin to see all that spiritual power that you're looking for. As Moses demonstrated, hey, was he not demonstrating some incredible magnificent kind of power right throwing dust in the air and all these kinds of things happening and um and the water turning the blood and and frogs coming up right and and hail right and uh the animals got sick right and then it became dark right and then the last one whew, death of the firstborn and you know some other um uh signs that i didn't mention so yeah he had that power. So you want that kind of spiritual power? Obey the Most High Yah. That's what we need to do. Be obedient to him. Hallelujah. Keep this covenant because it's been given to us, right? So we don't expect other people to, to do what the Most High has called us to do. 
we're not and if people are not going to obey the most high we don't get upset about that we just keep doing what he told us to do and keep being a light and someone told me i should shine my light in the motherland hallelujah so well, wherever the most high is sending us wherever we are we are supposed to shine this light and show forth his goodness his glory his kembo we have been given a portion of he doesn't share his glory with anyone like he, there's nobody else who can be on that front and center stage with him but he gives us bits and pieces of him small amounts of him so that we can shine and show forth his goodness hallelujah all praise to the most high yeah so that's all i have and um i hope that you have been you will be blessed when you hear this hallelujah so again happy samba happy sabata to the scattered sheep where you are scattered wherever you are scattered to the four corners of the earth may you continue to enjoy your shabbat hallelujah until next time um correction on um not lighting the fire on the sabbath uh that is exodus 35 and 3 i'll praise the most high yeah